welcome to Life Journaling and Dash for the 14th of April. The year is 2022. It's my birthday. Anyway, I'm David. This is Uvella. On the ground down here in front of us is Ollie and Hannah, our traveling companions, our golden retrievers that have gone with us literally all over the world. We're so glad you're with us today, broadcasting out of Plano, Texas. And today we are looking at 1 Samuel chapter 15 and 16, also 1 Chronicles chapter 5 and Matthew 1. I'm calling this one, Appearances Are Not Everything, and I'll get into that in a moment, but my bride, I go to you and ask you to open us in prayer for life journaling and dash. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for my husband, for his wonderful birthday today. Lord, continue to bless him as he has uh, continually to bless others. We ask that the words that we speak today be able to help others in their walk with you. Amen. It's kind of interesting that appearances aren't not everything. And your gift to me, my request, was some uh, physical coaching <laughs> to get in better appearance, but also not just appearance, really it's to get in better physical shape and to do it with some expert advice so that I don't hurt myself as I come out of the four hernia surgery last year and I want to be around for, you know, my granddaughter and, and life. I can serve God and not struggle through it as much. So thank you for helping me with my appearance, but it's not everything. First Samuel is where I'm pulling this from today in chapter 16, verse seven. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. My observation is we do scripture, observation, application, and prayer for whatever we're reading, which is SOAP, S-O-A-P. So today's observation, Samuel thought God would select Elo. He was the oldest son of Jesse, but instead God has Samuel select the youngest son named David to be anointed. Now this is the same David that would go on to fight the giant Goliath and actually become King David. So he didn't pick the one that was the tallest or strongest to start with, but then he selects David, who's off in the field feeding the sheep, the youngest. My application, this is just a reminder that looks can be deceiving. Maybe there's a lesson there for me. As they say in Texas, big hat, no cattle. So you look the part, but you're fake. It is also encouraging that God can use all of us with the right heart and that looks don't matter. I must journal and do devotions every day to seek and know more about God. Through reading and listening, I am reminded about what God wants from me. Appearances are not everything. My prayer, Lord, help me to make a priority of the things in my life that are important to you as I enter into a new birth year. Use me to reach others with your kingdom story and the truth this year. Guide us and protect us as long as we have work to do still here on earth. Amen, Pastor David. So looks are not everything. No. You know what that reminds me of? You can't tell everything by a book cover. Right, and I remember your sister telling me years ago about these beautiful homes here in this area. In Texas, where we're at, uh, they have some beautiful homes, very expensive homes. And she said that some people have these beautiful homes on the outside, but inside there's very little because they can't afford it. But they look rich on the outside. She's a principal at a local school, and so she understands. She sees um, all different sorts of families and things like that. But you're right. It's just a big house, but they're empty. Um, Mine uh, entails what you wrote about. Similar? I, yeah, but I also put another um, okay. verse in front of that. And my title are, Excuses Are Not Accepted. And it comes from uh, 1 Samuel 15, 20 and 21. But I did obey the Lord, Saul said. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites 
and brought back Aga, their king. The soldiers took the sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God in order to sacrifice them to the Lord, your God, at Gilgal. My observation. Samuel told King Saul to go into battle against the Amalekites and to destroy all the people and animals. King Saul did not follow his directions. In fact, in verse uh, 9, it says, but, fault, but Saul and the army spared Agath and the best of the sheep and cattle, the fat calves, the lambs, everything that was good. These they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. So when Samuel confronted King Saul about this, King Saul tried to justify his behavior, saying he kept the best of the animals so that he could sacrifice them for God. Now remember, earlier I just said that King Saul and the men kept the animals. Samuel tells King Saul that God wants obedience, not sacrifice. So then in verse 24, King Saul says, he was afraid of the men, so he gave in to them and let them keep the best animals for the raid. This is what happens when you tell a lie. Your story changes and you end up getting caught in your lie. My application, how will I be changed by what I read today? Well, in 1 Samuel 16, 7, it says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. This goes along with the, my verses today. God looked at King Saul's heart and saw right through Saul's excuses. Well, for me, I need to examine my heart and make sure I am doing things out of love and not out of obligation or sacrifice. It is easy to do the right thing for all the wrong reasons. My prayer, thank you, Lord, for reminding me that you do not accept excuses, that you look at the heart and not the actions. Amen. We have a mentor that says don't make excuses. Yeah. And then I just came from a, a staff meeting on Tuesday that says, one of our values is to own it. <laughs> they were paraphrasing, but basically, yeah, speak the truth. And um, this is a case where you can go to any mentor, it doesn't have to be a Christ follower, and say, do I make excuses? Because they can point out, uh, you're not asking them to examine your reasoning. It's like going to somebody and say, am I a complainer? Do, well, I, do I gripe a lot? Well, I think along with that, excuses go with justify. When you find yourself, that's what King Saul is doing. He and the men agreed to take the animals. But when Samuel said, hey, what is this sound I hear? He was like, oh, well, we kept them for sacrifices. Well, no, you kept them because they were the best. And then Samuel doesn't buy that, so King Saul says, What's happening? Because, and then King Saul says, "Oh, well, I was afraid of the men." That is the point right there. He was afraid of the men, and he was afraid of humans. But he wasn't. He's lying. He's trying to justify. He's trying to give excuses. It says earlier, he and the men kept the animals. So when he says, "I'm keeping them for the." Um, that's all a lie. The sacrifice, that's a lie. When he says, I was afraid of the men, that's a lie. And now he's trying to justify. So I think making excuses and trying to justify yourself goes along with not making excuses. God doesn't accept them. But God sees right through them. He sees right through them. Yeah. So tomorrow we'll learn more. We'll be looking at 1 Samuel chapter 17. Also, Psalm 9 and Matthew chapter 2, and I'll close this out in prayer. Okay. Father God, thank you so much for all these years that I've been around to be with you. Thank you for the ones where you opened my eyes and you allowed me to see you and to hear you and to, to believe you. But I pray for all those people that um, are listening to this podcast and watching the vlog that they too will be encouraged by what they've heard today 
and that they will be encouraged to walk with you and that appearances don't matter. You are after our hearts, Lord. And we ask that you continue to guide us and protect us. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.